Hey there. Not much else to say. We're gonna play some StarCraft today as well. And we're actually gonna try to win some games today and hope that we don't get three games of losses in a row again like last time. So let's get into it. Let's talk more playing. Let me shrink myself and put myself in the corner. Okay, let's go. <sighs> okay, PvT. So I feel like my PVT is kind of off lately, so I guess I could use the practice. I mean, even that we lose, but yeah, let's just do our best. Oh, let's greet them. So this is the smallest map in the pool, which, well, otherwise it's a, it's a pretty okay map, I guess. I quite like this map. It's just that the small rush distances are short, so certain kinds of cheese uh, are stronger. But otherwise, I kind of like this map, so. Slightly concerning that he hasn't upgraded his command center yet. I have a feeling that this may be some kind of a proxy. Yeah, I knew it. Uh, I'm not playing this very well. I'll definitely hold this, I think. Uh, I have a feeling that he kind of abandoned this rush already. Oh crap, I should have killed it. Never mind to kind of just go across the map and see what's going on on the other side there. Look at our blink. Oh man. We have a lot 
lot of money. Ooh, tank. I feel like doing some blink, blink pressure on him, but I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do right now. But well, I guess it's a bit late to turn back now. We'll try to attack alongside it, I guess. didn't go too too well at all oh I forgot charge that's a big deal oh my god I have a feeling that we may have done our own grave there It's not counter attacking, which is important. Okay, he is gonna counter attack now, I think.
Yes! That was actually close. He, he, he did the whole position micro really, really well. And if he, if he beat my attack back like too convincingly, his counter attack will actually be really dangerous because I did not have any Templar. Oh, what's this Archon doing here? This Archon would have been very useful. But yeah, so the counter attack would have been pretty scary, but but if I held the counter attack, he would be 100% dead just because his eco is so far behind. So, so he's 29 SCVs, right? So the best way he could have won this game is if he pulled all his SCVs, beat back, the, beat back, the, beat back this attack, and then just do a giant full SCV all in straight into my base, and hopefully that holds. And what I would have to do is I would have to make a bunch of Archons. Actually, I would probably still want, right? Because I don't have Storm, but Archons will do really well against an SCP pool, I think. So uh, I had I had seven gates, which I should have had more. But if I also pull my probes, I think I would have won. So either way, I think this was this was fine. He held much better than I expected because of his whole position micro, actually. But yeah, in the end wasn't enough and uh, we win <sighs> what's this idiots huh Nissan Z owner okay whatever Zerg I'm quite confident against Zerg but I don't like this map very much against Zerg so we'll see okay Uh, we should beat him. So this ramp is very wide and it's quite hard to get the Sim City exactly right. And you have to get it quite exactly right, otherwise it's really hard to hold like Ling floods and stuff. I think I got I think I got that right. Nothing out of the ordinary so far, so we're gonna play one of my one of my normal builds, I guess. so far That's a lot of links actually. I'm very well. 
this time. attack. Going well, actually. <laughs> well, I don't know, son. Wow, this guy actually flamed me. <laughs> Son, that actually feels that this is actually one of the best feelings in the game when you know that you beat them fair and square, and then they flame you. Why does everyone suck at this game now? That's not family friendly. Does it feel good to have zero skill? You never get out of bronze by not playing. <laughs> this is actually not an all-in, by the way. This is this is meant as a pressure build, which is why I made an immortal back tier, and I actually have a lot of money to expand to a third base if my. If my multitasking was a little bit better, I would be starting my third base right now. So the goal of this build is actually to cause as much worker damage as possible and to keep the warp prism alive. That's actually... Where's my warp prism? Oh, what, what are these two doing here? Uh, the warp prism. Keep the warp prism alive, do worker damage. And then, so what you do is you force the Zerg to make a lot of units in order to hold the charge timing. It's very similar to the... To the Four gate glaive at that build, except that I except that I use charge zealots instead of uh, adapts for a variety of reasons, right? But the idea is you do worker damage, force them to make a bunch of units, so that you know they will have a lot less workers than they would want. And if you can, you want to kill the third base as well. But usually zergs are more well prepared than this guy is, so I don't know what he's complaining about. But yeah, so you do worker damage, and then you take a third behind it. And then you keep your warp prism alive. The warp prism is there to prevent them from just sending all their units for a counter attack. Because the minute that they send everything, in comes the warp prism, and you're gonna lose your your worker line and all your queens again. So, so then you play the game out from there. You play a regular game where you force them to keep their units at home. You build up your economy, build up an army, and then you know the game proceeds from there. So, yeah. Feels good to win. <laughs> he had like he had he had seven workers left. He was just not prepared for this. We can take a look. So I actually it's actually really hard to hit the timing exactly right in this game. In, in for for this build. So I was actually a little bit late. You want you wanna be warping in somewhere in the middle of the map. At around like 427 or 428 or so, right? But I walked in really late, as we'll see later. We're gonna speed this up a bit. So this guy, uh, he has okay, he has like pretty much no vision. Uh, he has four zerglings, getting speed. Uh, let's see how many drones he made. All right. Our 
Actually, he doesn't even have that many drones. What is he doing? He has 900, 1,000 in the bank, and he's complaining about my skill. <laughs> oh man, I love it. I love it. I love it when things like that happen. So, okay. So, uh, so my warp prism leaves the base, right? So it's already 4, 26, 27. This is actually the point that you, you want to be able to warp in, like, uh, somewhere here. But my gates are not even finished yet, so I, I messed up. It's really hard to hit the time really sharp, so I usually usually I end up with like 5 second delay or so. So in this case, yeah, I walked in at about 4.35, which is like 8 seconds late. But this kid, I thought that he was being greedy and droning a lot, but he wasn't even droning. His, his drone count is similar to my pro card, so if I do any damage at all, you know, the problem with him is that he's banking 1,000 minerals for nothing. And you know, that is actually what lower league players do, especially this early in the game. So I really don't know what he's complaining about. No wonder he's dead. Right? He has no workers, he has 4 links, 1,000 in the bank. So, I don't know what he's complaining about. He deserved to, he 100% deserved to lose this one. Feels good, let's do one more. <laughs> Yeah, he's pretty low. But even at this level, 3-5, you really shouldn't be playing this bad. He must... He's probably having a bad day. Okay, so... Interrupting here for a bit. After that game, I actually played and recorded one more game, which I lost, and which is a kind of mediocre game. Not very interesting. And the thing is, right after I stopped recording, I played one more game that turned out to be a rather epic PBT that I also happened to win. So, I'm thinking that we are better served uh, looking at this game rather than the game that I recorded. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through the replay and I'm going to talk over it. And that's how we're going to, you know, conclude this video for this time. So, okay. So we're going to be watching this from my first person perspective. And uh, so it kind of looks like I'm playing the game except that my mouse is not actually doing the actions, right? So... Since for once we're actually just watching the game, uh, at least I'm actually just watching the game, so I'm kind of free, so I'll be able to, you know, take the opportunity to talk a bit more about, uh, you know, the thought processes and what I understand about this matchup and, you know, the various nuances and stuff. So, PVT, uh, the most common opener nowadays is to get gateway into Cybercore and the Nexus, right? Uh, people used to get Nexus before Cybercore, but nowadays it's becoming less popular because there are many maps nowadays that are quite small and you really want to have your first Cybercore unit out to deal with the, the, the Reaper when it gets to your base. So, uh, so what you do is you play as if you're getting Nexus at the gate, but instead of getting the Nexus, you will just get the Cybernetics Core first and then the Nexus. So that will delay your your Nexus by a little bit, but it lets you get the fastest possible timing for your first Cybercore unit. And, you know, that will usually be in time to deal with the Reaper when it comes. So here, you see, I get my Cybernetics Core, and then I go straight down to get my Nexus. So Reaper is a very common opener by Terran nowadays. Uh, not all Terrans do it, but most do. And the reason for that is because uh, number one, of course, it gives you scouting opportunities, gives you harass opportunities. And number two, it also, forced, it also forces the Protoss to keep at least, you know, one or two units at home to deal with your Reaper, right? Because uh, if you're playing an economic or tech-heavy style as Terran, you won't have too many units at home to defend. So if the Protoss just chrono boosts a bunch of units off his one gateway and sends them straight across the map, that's actually kind of troublesome to deal with as a Terran. So... With so opening Reaper lets you, you know, force the Protoss to keep one or two units at home, and that significantly blunts the edge of any aggression that they can do. So in this case, this guy is not going Reaper. I find that out because I send my probe in. I see a Marine. So if I, if you see a Marine at this timing, then pretty much it's not Reaper. Which is why I send my Adapt straight across the map. But usually, if a Terran doesn't get Reaper and they know what's going on, that usually means that they. Uh, they'll make sure they build enough units to deal with any pressure that you can put on.
so I shade in the check and sure enough he has like three marines so I should not have completed my shade here that was kind of a mistake and so my adept got shot a couple of times for absolutely no reason so at this point I see three marines and I decided to send my stalker over I was kind I guess I was kind of gambling that uh, he was going to get tagged and he won't be making many more units because you know one adept and one stalker can deal with quite a bit of marines but that was kind of a bad move in hindsight right because uh, if he was making marines, he was probably making units. So I shade in again, see that he was just making more marines. At this point, I really should have just brought my units back. So that was a mistake. So yeah, so he he made a cyclone, and at this point, it's kind of too late. I will, I, I I was if he plays right, I would just lose both both units at this point. So yeah, so cyclones are very powerful against small amounts of early units, just because you know they are faster and they have you know better range, just like that. So there's really nothing much you can do against them. So I lost two units for free there, which is really not brilliant. But at least I know that he made a cyclone, right? So making a cyclone tells me a few things. It tells me that he may be going mech because usually you don't make cyclones otherwise. It also tells me that uh, he's his uh, options for aggression is much more limited just because you know he he invested in a, in a cyclone that means that he made a, bur a factory with uh, with a tech lab and it also means that he spent at least one production round of that tech lab on cyclones instead of tanks so any bio tank kind of aggression that he could do would be significantly delayed and also mine drops are much less likely just because you know uh, you would make you you won't make a tech lab for mind drops usually. So he so so even if there's a mind drop, it would be much delayed. So I scouted him there, and I noticed that he was still making barracks, which is interesting because uh, one of the possibilities when you see cyclone is that they are they are playing mech, right? But in this case, I see barracks, so uh, that means that he's not fully committing to mech. But he's still playing some degree of bio and that that kind of complicates things a lot because then you're not sure exactly what he's doing or at least you know with uh, my diamond level scouting sensors I I can't pin down too much what exactly he's gonna try to do with his army composition and against something like that the Protoss is actually kind of reactive you know in terms of because there's no one composition you can make that is safe against everything. So you really need to have some idea of what your opponent is trying to do so that you can get the right units in order to fight it. Right? So at this point, yeah, so I think I decide to to attack him a bit. Because I'm not too sure what exactly he's trying to do. So I figured that one of the best things I can do is to just, you know, attack him. And uh by seeing what he uses to uh, to defend, I'll have some idea of, you know, the stuff that he's doing. So that's one way to scout as well. You can just attack. So yeah, I see two ravens, I see tanks. So probably the most important thing that I see here is that he's building a planetary fortress, right, with his with his uh, third command center. Oh, those tanks hurt man. But yeah, so he, so instead of making an orbital, he made a planetary fortress, and that has a few implications, right? Number one, it means that uh, I should really, really think twice about attacking this position, because uh, at this point in the game, planetary fortresses are extremely powerful. And it also means that he's sacrificing quite a bit of economy, right? Because uh, he's making a planetary fortress instead of orbital, that would significantly reduce the number of mules that he can have. And you know, for Terrence, that's actually a big deal. So at this point, I decide that I don't have to attack him. It's a bad, it's a bad idea to attack him anyway. Uh, because he's sacrificing economy, I can afford to sit back. Right. So the right thing for me to do here is to focus on my own economy and just try to get my bases you know, thrumming with workers and just to have a much better economic position than he is. Which I'm not doing that well at this point, really. So I also decide to go Colossus because I know that he has Marines and Marines are kind of a pesky unit in a game like this because you know that the Terran is 
gonna play some kind of turtle-ish mechy style. But most units for Protoss that deals well with mech units don't deal well with marines. Right? So uh, in this case I decide that the, my best way to remedy the situation is to make Colossus, because Colossus do pretty okay against marines. And I take my fourth base, which is really I needed to take it earlier, I wasn't macroing as well as I should. Yeah. Oh yeah, so this so this is a this is an important scout as well, right? Uh I sent a scout into his base and I noticed that yeah, so he has ringed his base with missile turrets. And that is a very unusual move for Terran because missile turrets are not cheap, right? So most Terrans, you know, have no reason to spend that much money on missile turrets around their base. Only Terrans, so if they're, if they're doing this, usually what it means is that they're trying to play a turtle style and they may also be hiding some tech, maybe they're going battle cruises or something. Right, so what that shows to me is that he's not planning, he's planning to, you know, just hold up in his side of the map and just try to make a very powerful army before moving out. So what you want to do in this kind of situation is you want to you want to expand aggressively, right? So I take my fourth base, and you want to have your army kind of sharking around their corner of the map. So this is what I'm doing as well. So I'm moving out of my army here, but this is not really to attack him and to try to kill him. It's more of like to make him aware that my army is on his side of the map, and to try to you know delay any attempts that he may have he may make to take a fourth base, right? To try to get ahead more to try to get more ahead economically, right? So the thing here is that you want him to know that your army is on this side of the map. Uh, Turtle Terrans will have a slow army, usually, so it's not easy for them to move across the map to threaten your bases. So if they know that your army is on their side of the map, in order for them to move out, they either actually have to try to come and fight your army, or, you know, if they try to move across the map in their own then your army is much closer to their base for the base race and you'll be ahead. So, yeah, I check his position, I see this really defensive position, there's no reason for me to attack to that. So what I want to do here is I want to just make sure that he's not trying to take a fourth, or if he is, I want to try to contest it. So I see that he's not taking a fourth base on this side of the map, so I want to just, you know, go on the other side as well. Another thing that's important is to test the defenses of the Terran if they're doing you know a kind of defensive play like that. Because some Terrans try to cheat and bluff you, right? They'll they'll make a show of having a defensive position, but then they actually don't have that much army and they're actually rushing like battle cruisers or something. And that's actually really scary because if the Terran gets a high amount of battle cruisers early on, that's really difficult to deal with as Protoss. So in this case, I try to just stage a bit of an attack to test his defenses, just to make sure that you know he's not just making battle cruisers behind this. So this is the first cruiser, right? So this is important, right? Uh, if he had like five or six cruisers at this point, then I'm in real trouble. So I really need to make sure he didn't, right? And so that that's that's the point of testing the defense as well. If you test if you test his defense to make sure that he is. He's been investing in his defense and not just making cruises to prevent him from having like 5-6 cruises at this point because if he did, then you know, I'll be in trouble. So as it is, he has like 1 or 2 cruises. That's fine for me. I can deal with it with Stalkers. I can start transitioning into Tempests, right? Still, his cruises, you know, do something for him and that is, he forces my army back, right, to my side of the map. And you notice that he immediately starts trying to take more control of more of the map. Like he made a new sensor tower in the middle of the map here. And he's most likely trying to take his 4th base now. So what I'm thinking at this point is I really want to try to make sure that he's... Uh, to try to stop you from taking a 4th if I can. So I decided to check this position, right? Uh, to see if you know he's taking a 4th there and whether I can... Uh, basically prevent him, right? So it turns out that he was not here. So that was unfortunate for me. He was taking this position, and my army is a bit far from that position at this point. But I still needed to check. So I so he, here's where I send some units over to this position to just verify that he's taking a fourth base over here. We 
So sure enough, he's taking a fourth base yet. So he makes a mistake over here, right? He tries to kill my probes, but then his cruisers came too far inland. What you want to do with your cruisers, you know, at this point is before the Prolos has air units, what your, your cruiser can kind of retreat to the dead space here and none of the ground units can hit you. So you want to make sure that your cruiser doesn't come too far inland. So that you know when the Prolas comes back to defend, you can just retreat to the dead space here. You really don't want to lose cruisers because cruisers are very expensive units, right? And they can be very cost effective. So before the Prolas has air units, right, there's no reason for you to be losing your cruisers just to get a few more probes. So that was a mistake, I would say, by him. So his supply you know, is actually higher than mine. He actually made a lot of units, but uh, a lot of that is in Marines. And uh, the reason I didn't want to go straight up to 200, 200 is because I needed to be reactive, right? I needed to know what units to make. And now that I know that he's making cruises, I can start filling up the supply with Tempest. Right? So at this point, I decided that I wanted to fight him, right? Because uh, this is an okay position. Uh, the main thing is I can get rid of all his Marines in this fight because his Marines are kind of stuck here. Right. This is not necessarily you know, a good fight for me in terms of cost effectiveness, but it's, it's nice to be rid of the Marines right, so that you don't have to think about that anymore and then you can just be playing against a proper mech army from here on out. So uh, I lost all my Stalkers, he lost all his Marines. Um, but still, for me, I feel that this is okay because uh, not having to think about Marines is actually not a bad deal. It's probably okay for him as well because then he can start making, you know, more expensive units out of the supply that was in Marines. So he he made a sensor tower here and, and he's trying to control this position, but I think that's a bit ambitious, right? So after that after that battle, so yeah, so here you see he has lost all his Marines. That means that my immortals have become much more powerful. Everything else here gets eaten by immortals, right? So I, I, he loses his position, his position here, which is nice for me. So what the Terran player tries to do usually when he's playing this kind of defensive mech style is that, you know, they will progressively try to control parts more and more of the map, right? And what you want to do as a Protoss is to contest these positions, right? You don't want him to have a good handle of where your army can be because you want to be able to, be able to catch him off guard, right? So he was trying to you know, control this position on the map, so I contested it, but he still has a pretty good control over this side of the map, right? So at this point, I can either try to come over here to, you know, to also take away his position here, but I decided that since I'm Tempest now, you know, I can actually do some sieging of my own, right? So here, this position is really hard to attack into in the conventional sense, because he has so many defenses. But because I have Tempest now, I don't actually need to attack him to it. I can just park my army up here and just shell his stuff, right, with my Tempest, because my Tempest has such long range. Right. So this is this is a mistake again, by the way. He's too far inland, he's gonna lose that cruiser. That's really a big mistake. So this is much harder for the Terran to deal with, right, because he actually has to come out to face my army. He can't just sit in an entrenched position to defend his base anymore. So this is good for me. He, he lost the Thor because the Thor came too far out. So I can just continually park here and just keep on shelling his units. And this will be a huge pain in his side. So it's, what, he decide, what he seems to decide to do is to respond by uh, just counter-attacking with battle cruisers. Right? Uh, with battle cruisers, but I think that's really a bad move because small amounts of cruisers is actually kind of easy to deal with as Protoss. You really want to save the cruisers up until you have critical mass. So, so he counter-attacked with the cruisers. He forced me to warp in a bunch at home, but that's fine. You know, I actually kill his cruisers. That's really a big deal for me. And by now, I've cleared out all his, you know, defensive missile turrets and everything. At some point, I can just walk in and kill his, 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 uh, Planetary Fortress, which is what I do. So 
So this is really great for me. He's still counter attacking with Raul Cruises, right? And that's really bad. See, that's I have all these stalkers at home. I think he's gonna lose one more. You really cannot be losing cruises like that. I think that's probably his biggest mistake this game. So at this point, I'm in a really good position. He has lost a bunch of cruises. My army is intact. And then I stumble upon his his production facilities here. So battle cruises, you know, if they if they are in if they have if you have similar amounts of cruises as tempests, cruises actually do pretty good against tempests. But when you have more tempests than cruisers, the tempests kind of destroy the cruisers. So, so yeah, you know he's wasting even more cruisers here. What this does is it just basically makes sure that, you know, he can never get an army that can directly face my army in open field, right? So all this at this point, I just got his economy. And then I can just recall back. And then there's nothing here that can really contest my army because he lost too many cruisers, his stores are at home, and then what's, what remains is just a bunch of Hellbats which, you know, gets completely destroyed by my army. So this is lucky, right? He actually secretly took a base in this position, right? Which I didn't know about, but my army walked past the base when he was coming back home, so I found it. So at this point, this game is pretty much over. Right, I've killed all his outside bases. My army is completely intact. I have much more supply, much more supply than him, right? And my army composition is actually really good, right? So, at this point, I didn't know how I, ahead I was. I could probably just walk into his base and win at this point. I was still being cautious, but yeah. So I was checking for hidden bases as well in case he has any more, you know, hidden bases because I just found one over here. So I noticed that he still has stores, he still has the planetary here. So there's no big, big reason for me to attack into this third position because uh, there's not much minerals there anyway, left anyway. So my zealots found out that he retook this fourth base. So I decided, okay, I'm just gonna come and kill the fourth instead, right? And his cruisers is on my side of the map again, which, well, there's nothing much you can do at, at this point anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so my army is way bigger, way more powerful than his at this point. So he's just kind of dead. So when you're blinking stalkers into Thor's, then you know that you know, you're, you're really, really far ahead. And GG. So yeah, so yeah, I feel that probably the biggest mistake he makes is losing so many cruisers to these uh, counter attacks, right? If he had like saved maybe eighty percent of the cruisers that he sent across the map, then he would have amassed you know quite a significant number of battle cruisers. You really want critical mass with battle cruisers, so I feel that probably his biggest mistake is really constantly hemorrhaging cruisers, just killing my probes and killing my stalkers, which is never you know never worth it. Like cruisers are much more expensive than stalkers, than tempers, than almost anything else. And the way you know the way that they justify their cost is that because they have teleport, they have a lot of you know HP, they can be repaired. So you want them to be cost effective. He's just been you know losing too many cruisers, just throwing them into my base. So yeah, I managed to win that game. That was a pretty. This was a fun game to play, right? It's pretty. You seldom get to. To, you suddenly get to play games where you get to like five six bases and you have 200 200 armies right with tempest involved so fun game that i managed to win so that was pretty great and uh i guess this will be a good place to end this video so <sighs> of course i only showed games that i won this time but i did lose quite a few as well we're still working on it right still working on it need to you know, keep increasing that skill level to you know the goal is to eventually get out of diamond to get the masters as white Ra would say more gg more skill see you guys next time